Hey, this is Joe from the Cell Phone Geek. Hey, uh, this is a continuation of the uh, computer build that we were doing, custom build computer. Uh, currently, I put the uh, power supply in from where we left off. I believe uh, the power supply was already in. Uh, I just put the processor on, and as you can see, the uh, gray here is thermal compound, which I just installed, or just squirted it on there, and then I used my little spatula that I showed you before, this little guy, and I smoothed it out. So that's uh, on there. And then now I got my heat sink here, which I'm going to take. Um, and as you see, there's a wire on here for the fan. So what you want to do is find where the heat sink fan has to plug in. And then uh, you go from there, and then you can see which way you can put the heat sink on here. So now I'm looking for the plug for the heat sink fan. And I'm not seeing it. Where is it? Oh, here it is. It's uh, hiding over here behind the ram here. So, uh, let's see, I could do it, um, I'm going to end up putting it on this way, so then, because the wire is over here on the side, so I wrap around and it's going to plug in right here next to it. So what I had to do is see this little hole here, it has to go on the hook here, on the back, and once I do that, then I set the heat sink down on top of the processor, like that, and try not to move it very much, and then hook the other side on. There we go, and then you flip the switch here, and then it smashes the the heat sink on top, so now it's solid on here, it's not going anywhere. And then I'm going to go ahead and plug in my fan. So plug that in here. Just got to line up the pins, and then it should go right on with no problems. Of course, remember, it's brand new, so it it's going to be a tight fit, but that's good. It makes good connections then, and that's it for that. Um... And then as you see, this wire here is hitting the uh, power supply, and it could possibly go in that fan. So uh, obviously, before you turn the computer on for the first time, if you have this problem, uh, there's a few things you could do. You can uh, use some zip ties, and you can zip tie it out of the way. Or uh, what I'm going to do here is you can unplug the fan, the power. And if you just make a knot, you just tie a knot through the wire here, like that. It actually will shrink up the uh, cord quite a bit, so you see the knot there. And then it will shrink up the cord here, and then it won't be anywhere near the fan. So now if I go and plug this back in, and then it should be fine. It will be out of the way. I can't seem to get it to plug in. Oh, sorry about that. It's kind of tricky because it's tight. It's like right up against the uh, ram here. Come on. Of course, the first time I went right on it, no problem. I can't get it to go on at all. Try to switch hands here, see if it makes it any better. There we go. I got it. All right. Yeah, I got it. See, now the power cord is not even anywhere close to the heat, to the uh, power supply. And then you can move this knot around if you'd like, so then it's not touch, touching the metal heat sink, because you don't want it to hit this metal either, because obviously, like like before, I said that the processor gets hot. So that means that this, these metal uh, uh, grates, or whatever you want to call them, these, these metal uh, sleeves, they uh, are going to get really hot. So you don't want wires or anything touching those. And then the purpose of the fan is to actually blow the heat off of the off of the uh, processor itself and off the heat sink. Okay, so that's all on there. So then the next thing what we're going to do is uh, get the hard drive here, which I have sitting right here. It's uh, the solid state hard drive from the pre uh, from the unboxing that I showed before. All I got to do is slide that into one of these slots here, and then uh, put in the screws, and then we'll be on our way here. And, of course, you have all these wires here, which are going to be going through that same area. So I'm just going to kind of have to push those out of the way for right now. And then I'm going to slide this in here. And hopefully my holes line up. And then I'll be in business. I thought the holes would line up, but it, they don't seem to be lining up very good. I think... That's very strange.
Oh, it looks like I think I, I think I put it in backwards. I think is what I did, unfortunately. Yeah, I put the hard drive in backwards when I when I attached it to this uh, box here. So I'm gonna pause the video real quick and fix the hard drive, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I have got to fix it here. I'm taking out the screws here. And I got to do is put in a couple of screws here to hold the hard drive uh, in place. So I'm putting in the two screws. It's pretty easy. Just line up the holes and then just put in the Phillips screw. Tighten them down nice and snug here. All right, so there's two in. Uh, I'm going to put the other two in, but uh, I have to take the back side of the computer off. There's two screws that hold on the back side. And then it slides off just like this side slides off. As you can see, it slides her off like that. Take that off to the side. All right, turn this around here. That's the back of the computer, or the right side of the computer. Not the back, the right side of the computer. So the uh, holes here are pretty much lined up, so I just have to put the screws in here. That way the hard drive doesn't move at all. Because obviously you don't want anything moving in your computer. See the back of the motherboard here. Processor sits up in here. Power supply is right here. The rest of it's pretty much open, you know, all around, so you can do whatever. You can feed your wires through zip time or however to do cable management. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and flip this back over. You hear some loose stuff, but that's just because it's the power power cords. All right, then what I like to do next is I'll put the DVD drive in because I don't hook up any of the power or any of the wires for power or for uh, data for any of the drives until after I get all the drives in. That way I, I can figure out which drive I want to plug into which port on the motherboard. And same with power, and I know which power cords are going to reach, reach where. Uh, and I just do that all at one time. So the next thing to do here is pop off the front. If it comes off, it should pop off. doesn't want to pop off for me, though. I think it's actually screwed on there. Well, maybe you're not supposed to pop it off. You're supposed to pop out the uh, bracket or pop out the doors that you need. Like I need one of the DVD drives open here like this. So I push it from the inside and pop it through. So then I just have to drop the DVD drive in here. And uh, but got to be careful because I don't want to drop it all the way in. I mean, I want to drop it in here so it slides in here like this. And then... Uh, See where it lines up, and then I gotta put the screws in. Cause so I don't want it to go too far in. I move the power cords out of way here. Sorry about that. I'm trying to stay out of the camera view here. All right, so I got one of them here. I'm gonna try to put the screw in here a little bit. Get my Phillips screwdriver here. I'm using the wrong screw. <laughs> Alright, I got the right screw here. I'm putting it in. Alright, tightening it down. But of course, make sure it's a little snug. I mean, it's a little loose, but you want it a little, a little snug that way. That way you know that you can move it around because you have to try to make it. I like to try to make the drive as flat as possible with the rest of the computer so it looks like it all blends together and fits in with each other compared to if it sticks way out or it doesn't stick out enough because you, you don't want that. Nobody really wants that. All right, so let's get this pretty good here. I'm going to flip the computer over again and put the screws in on the other side. You also got to be careful when you do this. You don't want to cut yourself because, of course, there's metal in here. Uh, you can't slice yourself open. Uh, but so far, I haven't sliced myself open, so just be careful. You just got to be kind of safe here. Also, you want to make sure you don't have any static electricity. So keep touching the case periodically so you don't short anything out or fry anything because that wouldn't be fun. That gives you more work to do after you just built this whole computer yourself. 
All right, so I'll make sure this is flat here on the front, which it is here. Yeah, perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten these guys down, these four screws here on the DVD drive, just to make sure it's not going to go anywhere. I'm going to flip it back over. Tighten down these screws, make sure that it didn't move, make sure it's still flat. And then tighten these screws down, these two screws on this side. Uh, you, two on each side is usually good, you don't need any more than that. Two screws on either side of the DVD drive. Same with the hard drive. There are four holes, but that depends on what kind of case you have. So you just have to, you just really need two Two screws on either side of the DVD drive, just like the hard drive. You only need two on either, either side, just so it doesn't move around, so they're nice and solid in there. All right, and then, of course, you got this plastic piece here. This is what I popped out for the DVD drive. Uh, you can hold on to this, so, like, if sometime you uh, decide you're going to take this drive out and you don't want to have a DVD drive in, you, you can snap this back in its place to for, uh, as a filler, so it's not just a hole in your computer. Also, this works good if, uh, say, you break one of the other ones on here, your kids push on it or whatever, you snap it off on accident, you have, you have an extra spare here, so you can snap this in this place if another one breaks, which always comes in handy sometimes. So I'd hold on to that. All right, so once you do that, now you can go ahead and get your cables uh, figured out. So, like, the power cables here, I'm going to go ahead and do these first. And then, of course, we have the data cables, which in my case, they're all SATA cords, so that makes it easy. <clears throat> so, we go through here. This is kind of cable management here, try to untangle them all and try to figure out where each cord needs to go. And then just match it up like this here is for your process, or for your motherboard. You can tell because it's real long, and if you count um, all the uh, ports on this, you can count the one on the computer itself, which is usually white, which is this guy here. This just plugs into here, and then there's a clip here that snaps into place. And this qualifies for every every power supply out there. So if you ever have to replace a power supply, it's the same thing. Not much to it. And then just make sure that it clips on there for you. And then just go through and organize the cables. Figure out which cables you need to go where. And I'm looking for the one for the uh, graphics card. There's a graphics power over here, which is, looks kind of like a house with four squares. So I found the one with the four squares here. And I just have to try to keep this without getting it tangled up. Go through here and plug into its spot. Okay, once I did that, as you can see, this cord here is kind of in the middle of this fan. That's not a good idea, but for right now, I'm going to leave that. This guy I'm not going to be using, so he's going to be, be tucked away later. But for right now, I'll just kind of move him out of the way. And all we have left is uh, power for the solid state hard drive and for the DVD drive. So I'm looking here to see what kind of options we have. Looks like there's only two SATA spots on two SATA power on this power supply, and then the rest of the IDE power, which uh, I'm still in luck because they gave me an adapter that came with my solid state hard drive that converts the IED to SATA, as you saw in the unboxing video. So I'm going to have to go ahead and use that for power. Um, I'm going to use this cable actually instead of using it on the hard drive since the hard drive is going to be the one that's constantly being at work, I'm going to use this adapter on the DVD drive. It really doesn't matter, but um, just in case if this adapter uh, ever fails or whatever falls apart or has issues, it will have it on the DVD drive and not on the actual hard drive with the operating system is running on. So I'm just going to do it that way. But you could do it however you want. That's just my preference. So you plug these in. Just gotta make sure you line them up correctly. Push them in. Not much to it. And then I'm gonna take one of these here. 
Uh, let's just use this one, I guess. And plug this adapter in here. This plugs in like that. And then it just plugs right into your right into the DVD port on the DVD drive for power. Like that. So that's plugged in. I got two extra sets of cables here that currently aren't being used and a couple extra ones are floating on the same cord. So that's right for now. And then I got of course this loose one here. And now I just gotta hook up the data cables. And I got two of them here, came with the motherboard. You can see that in the open unboxing videos. So we're going to go ahead and use both of these cables here. Just opening them up out of the package. Now I got to do is take it for the DVD drive and right to the motherboard. And I'm going to do uh, the SATA 1 on the motherboard that's labeled SATA 1. I'm going to go and put that into the hard drive. That way the hard drive uh, is automatically checked first because it goes by the number order on the motherboard. And then another thing you can do with this is you can knot it or you can twist it. I'm just going to twist it up a few times here and then uh, plug it in. Twist it up one more time here. And then I'm just going to plug it in here like that and then click into place. Then what you could do later is then you can take this and zip tie it or whatever you'd like or you could just leave it like this. This uh, way doesn't hurt anything. You might collect a little dust around the wire but uh, most of it's up out of the way so it it shouldn't bother anything. All right, and then I'm going to just do the same thing to the DVD drive. And both of these ends on this one are the same. There's no 90 degree uh, angle cut in any of these. See, they're exactly the same. But you can buy the cords with a 90 degree angle um, on them, which um, is good on for some uh, towers, depending on what kind of case you have. But for my reason, for this case, there's no need for anything fancy. So everything snaps in perfect. So I just snapped it into SATA 2 on the motherboard since it's a DVD drive. All right, so that was it for the those cables. Um, pretty much that is it. Then these cables you can take and you could just tuck inside underneath your DVD drive here, wherever you like. Uh, this one here, you could do that knot idea like I was showing you to get that out of the way and then you just stand her up here and it's good to go everything's in it motherboard the CPU with the heatsink the power supply a DVD drive and a hard drive that's all you need and you can run your computer you just gotta hook it up to a monitor keyboard and mouse and uh, put the operating disk whatever you're gonna use for your operating system in the DVD drive or if you have it on a flash drive you can plug that in your computer and uh, boot this up and install the operating system. I'll show you how to install an operating system on another video. So that is it for this video on how to build a computer. Um, it's really not that difficult as you can see through the video. I know it took a little longer than I thought it was going to take, but um, that was it. You could do a custom built computer. That's how I just did my custom built computer. And it's really that easy. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, stay tuned for more videos.